Hi, welcome to Mimi Math. Today we're going to look at equations of circles. So this is our last week in the summer geometry class. Yay! And this is the last four lessons, so we're almost done. Okay, we're going to look at the equation of a circle, and the standard form of that is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where h k becomes the center of the circle and r is the radius, or r, yeah, r is a radius, so we, we have to take the square root of this r though. What we see in the equation, we have to take the square root of that to actually find the radius. Now the general form is when this gets all foiled out. So when you're going from standard to general, you're just going to foil. But once it gets foiled out, we write it as ax squared plus bx plus c plus dy squared plus ey plus f is equal to r squared. And that is our formula, okay? So the once that gets all foiled out, there's where we are. And we're gonna learn how to go from here back to the circle, the standard form later. Okay, write an equation of a circle that has a center of three, negative two, and a radius of four. So our center is hk, h is three, k is negative two, and then our radius is four. So we would plug it in as x minus three squared, quantity squared, plus y, and it's gonna be minus a negative two, so it's gonna be plus two, quantity squared is equal to the radius squared, so 16. And that would be our standard form. So let's write another one. Write an equation of a circle with a point with negative four, zero as a center and a diameter of 10. Okay, well plugging in the center, hk, we're gonna get x plus four, right? Minus a negative four, plus y squared, because we're adding zero, is equal to the radius. Well, if the diameter is 10, the radius is five, so five squared is 25. So there's that one. Okay, now let's write an equation of a circle with the center seven, I'm sorry, two, negative nine, and a radius of the square root of 11. So let's plug it in, x minus two squared plus y plus nine squared is equal to, well, that's uh, square root of 11 squared is just 11. Okay, so that's how you write the equation, the line given the center and the radius. Now let's do it backwards. Let's look at the equation and write the center and write the radius. Okay, so the center, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the coordinates and, and take the opposite sign, basically, because the formula is, is x minus h, so h is just positive six, and then y minus k would be negative three. So our center is six, negative three, and then our radius is the square root of 25, which is just five. Okay, so those are pretty easy, pretty easy to follow along with. Now let's look at a graph. So we've looked at forward, backwards, now let's look at the graph. Find the center, the radius, and the equation. Well this first one, you can tell by looking at the height and the width that the center has to be at the origin. So zero, zero is the center, and then our radius is from the center to this point, which looks like it's 12. So our radius is 12, and now let's plug in x squared plus y squared, because zero, zero is the center, is equal to the radius squared, so 144. Okay, let's look at one that's not quite centered up. Okay, what you wanna do now is look at your high and your low points, your top and your bottom. So I'm at four, and I'm at negative 10. So how far apart are those? That's 14. So that means my radius is half of that, right? Because the diameter would be all the way through. So my radius is seven. So where is the center? Well, my peak is here going down and my left to right is here going across. So let's see, that's at one negative three, looks like it's the center. So do you see what I did? I drew my diameters in. So positive one, negative three is my center. Now let's plug it in as x minus one squared plus y plus three squared is equal to radius squared or 49. Okay, that's how we look at a graph and write the equations. Now 
let's take an equation and actually graph it. Okay, what's our center? Our center for number 7 is going to be positive 3, positive 2, with a radius of the square root of 9, which is 3. So let's plot that. 3, 2 is the center. Now, to graph it, you want to go up 3, down 3, left 3, and right 3. And then once you get those points, you're just going to neatly connect those and you have your circle graphed. Pretty easy. Okay, so that's page one. Let's look at page two. Second part of this lesson is converting. Okay, this gets a little bit more involved. Okay, what if we are given um, the coordinates of a circle in general form and we have to convert it back to standard? So this is what we're gonna do. We are going to group the X's, the X family, sorry, kind of X family members together. And then we're going to group the Y family together. Okay. And then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to move, um, move the constant. That's the number without a variable, right? to the right side of the equation. Okay, we're gonna move it to the right side. Then we are gonna complete the square for each X and Y, for both X and Y, and then we will factor to put it in to change the form, to put it in that um, standard form. Okay, it sounds like a lot, but once you do it a couple times, it's really pretty easy. Okay, let's look at the first one. We're gonna group our x's together and our y's together. So I'm gonna put my x squared first, and then my negative eight x second, I don't have, uh, then I'm gonna do plus y squared, and I don't have a y value, so I'm just gonna keep that as y, and then I'm gonna move this seven to the other side, so it's negative seven over here. Okay, so I've grouped my x's together. Let's go back and look at the steps. I've grouped my x's together, I've grouped my y's together, and I've moved the constant to the right side. Now I need to complete the square for both x and y. Okay, so let's look at how to complete the square. Let's see, hopefully you learned how to do this. But what you want to do is you want to take the middle term, or the 8, the, that's in the coefficient in front of the x term, and you want to half it and square it. So half of 8 is 4, 4 squared is 16. And that will complete the square for the x. The y doesn't have a constant, so we don't have to do anything to it. Okay, now what we just did is we added 16 to this equation. You can't just add 16 to the left side of an equation and still expect it to be an equation, so we have to add it to the right side. So we're going to add 16 to the right. So, so far we have x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared is equal to negative 7 plus that 16, so we just added 16 to both sides. Now what we're going to do is we're going to factor. Factor to change form. So we've got to take this trinomial and factor. Well, as you can see, what we've just created is a perfect square trinomial. It's going to be x minus 4 times x minus 4, or x minus 4 squared, plus y squared equals, well, negative 7 plus 16 is positive 9. Okay, now we have it in standard form. The x quantity is squared, the y quantity is squared, and we have a radius. So our center is 4, 0, because there's nothing added to the y, and our radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so that's how we do it. Now let's try it when we have a few more elements to work with. Okay, so number 9, we're going to put x squared plus 4x together plus y squared minus 6y, put the y parts together, is equal to, I'm going to move this 3 to the other side, so positive 3. 
Now we've got to complete the square. So I'm going to take this 4, which is the coefficient to the linear term for x, and I'm going to half it and square it. So I'm going to add 4 right here. But if I add 4 to the right, I have to add it, or if I add it to the left, I have to add it to the right. So I'm going to add a 4 here. And now let's complete the square again, this time for the y. This time we have a linear term. So 6, half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Now I can take my x part, the, and what I just did was complete the square, and it's going to be x plus 2 quantity squared plus, how does this one factor, y minus 3 quantity squared equals, let's see, 9 plus 7 is 16. So now I can pull out, you can see I've now got this in standard form. So my center is what? Negative 2, positive 3, and my radius is 4. Okay? Now, let's look at number 10. Number 10's got a little trick here. We got 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 16x plus 4y plus 20. I didn't, haven't had a coefficient yet. So what I need to do is I need to get these coefficients to be 1 instead of 2. So I'm going to divide every single term by 2 so I can get my, my squared terms. So my lead coefficients are 1. So let's see, 16 divided by 2 is 8, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 30 divided, or 20 divided by 2 is 10, and 0. Okay, now I can work with it. So sometimes there's an extra step of just getting your lead coefficients on the x and the y squared to be 1. Now let's group x squared minus 8x, and then y squared plus 2y is equal to, move the 10 over, that's negative 10. So we've done the moving. Now let's complete the square. 8, you half it, you square it, and you add it to both sides. I have a little song I sing. You half 8, you square, square it, and add it to both sides. So I'm going to half 2, which is 1, and square it, which is 1, and add it to both sides. So there we go. So I've added uh, 16 to the x family. I've added 1 to the y family, so I've added the 16 and the 1 to the right side. Now let's factor. Okay, so I'm going to get x minus 4 quantity squared plus, well, how does the y factor? y plus 1 quantity squared equals, what, 7? And so what's our center? 4, negative 1, and our radius, don't be tricked, it is the square root of 7. Don't forget to take the square root of that. Okay, so... Last thing I want to show you, and this, after doing that, that's really hard, right? Lots of steps. Now, what if you have the, you, you want the general form and you're given the standard form? Well, this one's easy. What you're going to do is just the opposite of what we did up here. We're going to foil these out and get them in descending order. So let's see, x squared, um, so you base, let me just write it all out. x minus 4 times x minus 4. And then over here, I'm going to have a y plus 3 times a y plus 3, because that means that square means we have two of them, right? And equals 36. Now let's just FOIL them, okay? x times x is x squared. My outer, negative 4x. My inner, negative 4x. Plus 16. Plus, FOIL this part out. y times y is y squared first. Outer, positive 3. Inner, positive 3. Last, positive 9 equals 36. Okay, and we're not quite done because we have to combine things together. So I'm going to get x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 36. Ooh, we're almost done. Now we just need to get our constants together. So 16 plus 9 is 24, and then with that 24... We are going to bring this negative 36 over, and so what do we get? We get negative 12 as the constant. So we're going to have x squared minus 8x plus y squared plus 6y minus 12 equals 0. And there we go. We now have it in general form.
and that's how you um that's how you do it so hope this video was helpful on circles <laughs>